Hello there, so why I didn't vlog Burning Man? My reflection and some surprising truth about the event that I want to talk about here. So as you saw in my last video, I was preparing to attend Burning Man event at Black Rock City. So if you haven't watched it yet, it was all my preparation, all the tips that I was giving to attend the event, how to get there, the price of the camp, what is Burning Man and all that. So I'm not gonna repeat what it's about. Here is more like the disappointing news for my follower that wanted to see a vlog of it. And I'll explain why. I just wanted to be present at the event and not be having like some digital social media distraction. So um, that's one of the reasons I, I didn't vlog Burning Man. Uh, I had some issues around this whole YouTube process that I needed to reflect on. So uh, yeah, I didn't want to, to vlog. Or I took some pictures and uh, I have some clips that, that will be uh, passing through when I'm talking. Also, you, <laughs> you see me also cleaning up, folding up the tent and everything, uh, cleaning up the mess of the, this dusty place. But yeah, so I received a lot of questions that are pretty much the same. So I decided to write them down and then uh, so we have a bit of a structure video. But my experience, and if you are thinking to go to Burning Man, maybe you get some lesson learned from uh, from this video, or you can uh, also like uh, think a bit more if it's the right place for you, because uh, it's not all just about fun and things like that. So let's get started. How did Burning Man impact you emotionally or mentally, both during and after? Um, Emotionally, I would say it didn't impact me that much emotionally because I always see when people go to Burning Man, they always like, it changed my life. It's like an amazing experience. But then the same people, are like, you see them at, on their Instagram or anything post-burn. And all they did was like chasing DJs and like, how ah, did it actually <laughs> change your life? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit curious. I think what has changed for me and the way it has impacted me emotionally is like I receive a breath, a breath of fresh air of, uh, how do you say it, inspiration into the creative side, on, into my career. I could tap it a bit more into my creative side. I was there with an analog, analog camera like uh, taking one or two pictures a day. And I was inspired by all the art that I saw there because it's amazing to see that people actually working a whole year creating this art that they, they are going to exhibit there and in other events through the year. That a lot of effort that goes into it. And it shows that the dedication is a, it's a very important one you want to create and then you can create whatever you want to create. And uh, after, emotionally, it's not, uh, it's more that, it's not that I miss it, but I think <laughs> that I have a bit of a FOMO, that I, I missed out on a few things that I wanted to do, like some workshop and everything, because it's not all about music. You also have a yoga workshop, find your divine feminine workshop, <laughs> and uh, emoticon, that is actually a very um, famous workshop at, at Burning Man, where male and female come to, in a circle to talk and, and talk about their emotion and their lives. And you can find it as well in London, but it's not like as available, I, I would say, to, uh, to talk through um, your emotion. And it also was good to reflect this in a place that, calls, that is called the temple there, when you want a bit of time on your own and reflect on things. This is um, a good place to be. But um, it was not a shock for me, actually, uh, Burning Man. It's amazing, incredible experience. There's no place like this in the world, I can confirm. But in terms of people, um, in my daily life or in my travel life, I'm really well traveled. I've been tapping into this kind of community for a very long time. So it doesn't come as a surprise for me to go to a workshop that talk about your, your emotion and things like that. So maybe for some people or people who are younger, 
I'm in my late 30s, so I have a bit of a life experience, I would say, but people who are a bit younger, some stuff that are happening at Burning Man can come up as a shock and impact them emotionally, I would say. Mentally, yeah, yeah, just want something I want to add how it impacted me mentally is, um, yeah, do you have so many memories that comes into your head about the experience, about the music, about the sunrises, and you just like daydream about it. And also the trip after we went to Lake Tahoe um, and we did a little California road trip that was really, really, really beautiful. So these kind of nice memories. And but now I'm back to normal, like, you know, <laughs> you switch very quickly uh, back to your routine. So yeah, that will, uh, I would say, emotionally and mentally. Um, what surprise, no, that's the, uh, yeah. What are the most underrated aspects of Burning Man that aren't obvious to newcomers? As I said, all you see on social media about Burning Man is these DJs, this art car, this laser everywhere, this non-stop parties. <laughs> Actually, I read the comments about Burning Man in other videos. Oh, a bunch of rich kids that are bored and the daddy's money is paying. Well, my daddy's money didn't pay for it. I pay for it myself. And it's not cheap, it's not for everyone. So, and actually, yeah, there's nobody that was act acting like, oh, my dad is a lawyer, my daddy. There's nobody that, uh, especially not around me, that was acting in such manner. So when I see this kind of comments, like it's just annoys the hell out of me because it's mostly people who have actually never been there that, uh, that like to criticize the event. So back into what is underrated is the amount of effort that goes into building this city, this temporary city. Most of people get there like a week before, in the desert heat, and construct all this theme camp in order to provide and serve the, attend the attendee. And each attendee actually has to bring something to the table, either something that you make and you want to, to, to give, food, there's like a camp, <laughs> I know it's a bit like a, someone will put on the comment, oh, champagne, blah, blah, I don't give a fuck. There's a camp that was providing champagne for the whole week. So <laughs> for sunrise, they, um, they have a, this uh, sunrise party where they give you champagne from 6 a.m. to, to 1 p.m. and the, there's like some music and things like that. And uh, it's pretty <laughs> insane. It's like, this is like, what, what is happening here? Like, this is crazy. And this is just the kind of thing. So people are like, oh, why do you pay that ticket for like $600? Like you're so, you're so entitled to think that you can go to Burning Man and pay $600 and that money doesn't go everywhere. It goes somewhere. There's a lot of people working there to make sure that you're safe. There's an hospital on site. There's emergency service uh, if you need help that, uh, that need to be supported. They have a big, big, big health and safety insurance going there. They have like some sanitary uh, reason that uh, they have some sanitary cost because they have to clean all the porta potty quite on a regular basis. So it's a big operation that is ongoing. Unfortunately, it's not the 80s anymore. They cannot run it as they used to run. And there's this unfortunate reality in the world we live in, like stuff are getting expensive. There's a big cost of living crisis all around the world. America is not like spared for that. So um, yeah, you need to pay a ticket. People always want things for free. And then you gotta not pay anything, go to Burning Man. And if something happened to you, what are you gonna do? Like, <laughs> you, you actually have to think like, this money is, doesn't go to anyone. Mostly everyone that run that, um, that event is a volunteer. And it helps to fund, actually, there's a lot of artists that don't, don't have the fund to create and to make a sculpture, to get material, to bring there, to create their things. So they are getting actually money so they can bring art to the event, which is, art is really the essence, the essence of the, the event. And what also, uh, what also is underrated is like that it's very inclusive. I know that there's a lot of uh, talk about Burning Bang being very white. It's all about Silicon Valley bros coming there with their Instagram girlfriend 
I didn't see any of them. I don't know where they were, but I didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> uh, people actually don't say. The good thing also I like is like, this, the first question that people ask you is not, like for example in London or any big city, the first question that people ask you is like, oh, what do you do for work? Like, this is not the thing, nobody asks you. It's not the first thing that people ask you there. A very underrated thing is the amount of work and the dedication that people give to the community and uh, are willing to help, are, are willing to offer. And these people, like this food, uh, food supply, you can wake up at 6 a.m., you want a pizza, it just appears in front of you, ice cream, all the maintenance that goes into providing all these services for free, entre parentheses, is, uh, is quite awesome, it's quite wholesome. And another thing that is underrated is that you have to work. <laughs> you don't go there. Of course, there's big camps that is called plug and play, where people pay a lot of money and they have servants and all these people. But to be honest, the organization is trying to get rid of them. The organization is even talking about getting rid of RVs, um, so because it's not good for the environment. So um, yeah, they, they are trying their hardest to go back to to what they used to be, but the world is not like this anymore. So we have to accept the reality of our time. And when you are part of a camp, you have to, you have shift, you have to participate to the community, you have to help build the camp, you have to help uh, strike down the camp and make sure that you leave no trace, that um, you, 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 you keep things how you found it. So, I think that's a very important thing to, to tell about people. About inclusivity, I will go back to that. Um, yeah, it's not white, like there were a lot of black people there. <laughs> this is not, it's just like, yeah. So um, we have to stop uh, these people from all over the world. Um, it's very inclusive, it's very diverse, it's uh, gay friendly. Everything that you need, you can find it there. So um, yeah, if you've never been, I would just recommend you to go before criticizing it. And then if you have anything to say after that, then I'm happy to have a debate. Now, all the troll in the comment that will start saying uh, rich tech bro, all this stuff, like I don't want to see it. Please uh, refrain from it. Um, yeah, so I will say that. Uh, so how did you stay grounded to, to avoid sensory overload at <laughs> God, this is so hard. Um, yeah, I wasn't grounded. <laughs> I had massive FOMO. Like I wanted to do, they, at the beginning of the week, they give you a book, what, where, when. But please don't read it because uh, you're gonna die from FOMO. There's so many things happening. Um, like, <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, no, I wasn't grounded at, uh, at all. Um, so, uh, you try to not move as a big group, I would say. If you are there with a big group of friends, try to spend time alone, individually, not worry too much about the experience of the other person. Just focus on your own experience. This is also a lesson for me. The first couple of days I was worried about a few friends not having a good time because it's just my nature, I'm very nurturing, uh, cancer sensitive, <laughs> sensitive, all this BS. But anyway, um, yeah, just focus on your own experience and don't worry about your friend, don't worry about people. Of course, if something dangerous happened to one of your friends, you, you, you are there and everyone is also there to help, especially former burner, they know what to do. But um, yeah, it's all about that. Uh, do the best you can, take care of yourself. Um, yeah, and uh, just sleep. A couple of mistakes, sorry. A couple of mistakes that I didn't do is not sleep enough. Um, There's a few nights when I was out and uh, I was also, also a bit chasing DJs sometimes. And the set were not great. I live in London, I go to Amsterdam a lot. I lived in Tulum. I would say the DJ set <laughs> much better in these cities than in Burning Man, especially night time kind of event. So that was a bit of a shame. But lesson learned now. Next time I won't be doing that. I will be looking for smaller, more intimate event.
But instead of doing that, I should have gone to bed early and uh, woke up from sunrise. Sunrise is, is something, if you go to Burning Man, do not miss out on. So, what you, uh, yeah, leads to the next question, what I wish I've done differently, either before or during the event. I've just spoke about what I should have done differently during the event, it's like sleep, look for smaller activities to do. And uh, prior, um, I should have done more research maybe about the camp, but I was a bit, um, how do you say, like this camp I, I went to was fine, very affordable, and a lot of my friends were going there. It was just easy, I, I found the easy solution, but I'm looking for something specific at the burn. I don't know what is it yet. I still need to reflect on that. But I need a specific camp. I don't know what I'm looking for yet. Maybe next year if I go back and I find what I'm looking for, I will let you know. But I want something a bit more, ah, a bit more ingrained into the burning. I don't want a party camp. I don't want a camp where you just roam around and there's not really a good community spirit. Maybe, let's see, maybe I want a camp where I can be the photographer and help participate and give something back. I just like, yeah, I just think something was missing in the camp I was. I don't, can quite put my finger into it. And uh, no offense to anyone who was there, everyone was nice. There's no issue with people at all. This is just something that I'm looking for, that I know, don't know what it is yet, but I need to think about it. What people are not anticipating is <laughs> hot. It's hot during the day. You get very tired cycling around. You get very disoriented. There's an app called iBurn that uh, helps you navigate, which I find is a shame that there's an app, but <laughs> also <laughs> save my ass cut a few times. It's an offline app, offline app where you can load where are you staying? And then um, from there it gives you, and then you can find favorites on the things that you want to attend. And then you can follow, the, it shows you where to go and everything. Because like the playa is a grid, but it's a huge place and it's, it's quite hard to navigate. It takes about you know, four days. It took me four days to not have to use the app <laughs> and then find my way around. So um, yeah, that, quite surprising and that night is so cold <gasps> I don't know if it was like something special just for this year but yeah wrap up warm I didn't have any t-shirts and stuff like that so I just had my little top and my uh, weather jacket my my weather jacket my fur jacket and uh, I, I would say I, I, I got cold and also in terms of outfit oh my god don't stress about the outfit you end up Especially from Thursday, from Wednesday night onward, stuff just go crescendo. You don't sleep, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Bring some uh, outfit from, <laughs> if you want to be fashionable, you'll be from Wednesday to, no, from Monday to, let's say, Thursday after that. Uh, so, uh, no, you're gonna be dusty and outfit doesn't matter. So don't overpack, please. Take a small bag. So. Some of the best way to get involved and contribute to the Burning Man community without feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, I would say if you are not uh, Andy man or woman, <laughs> don't uh, put yourself into a shift where you have to build something because with the heat and everything is just unbearable. I would say if you are an introvert, uh, pick a bar shift, a shift where you are at the bar in the kitchen. It helps you to connect with other people. Uh, if you like photography, like I offer to take pictures of people and send them later. Just do something that is tailored to your personality and don't, don't fake it, don't, just don't be fake. So um, how to build mini, meaningful connection at Burning Man? And if uh, anyone had the lasting impact? I think you shouldn't focus too much on that. I think what you should do, you should focus on the people you came there with, if you came as a group, and then see what is it that you have in common and what is it that helps you being friends. And of course, don't create drama. Please 
no drama don't like if a friend does something that you are upset about just like leave them alone go your own way and think about it and after five minutes you are forgotten because you probably see something <laughs> like a naked man or, or something like that, that will make you forget about it um, yeah just focus on that I'm building or strengthening the connection that you have with the people you came there with if you came as a couple I will like yeah just yes, focus on, on on your couple and don't like just basically don't create drama don't ruin the experience for other people and then be yourself and you attract people that are the right fit for you don't don't, don't try to, to to fake anything like to go to this very expensive camp thinking that you're gonna find a rich sugar daddy or something because it's not gonna happen <laughs> I'm not talking for experience or anything because I'm not into this kind of thing I don't really care but yeah I, I will say that just be yourself and uh, you make the right connection and you'll be at the right place at the right time and uh, this is how I, I made my connection this is the only advice that um, that uh, that uh, that I will give uh, to people long-lasting impact no because I am uh, part of this community so I can uh, understand and know people so yeah, keep in contact if you like someone. Make sure to have a notebook with you. Take the detail, take the contact, and see how the relationship goes after all. I cannot give London helicopters, God. I cannot give a, a testimony now about those connections that I made are, are long lasting, they were. This is something to talk about maybe in a year time. But yeah, so that's the advice I'll give. Just focus on your inner circle. So how do you manage self-care <laughs> and mental well-being? Self-care on the camp as a shower, well, that did work until a certain point. Um, you have to moisturize, make sure to moisturize every night, moisturize every night. Uh, keep your nose also, keep everything moisturized. Um, yeah, they, they have showers, their food, make sure to eat because you, we don't tend to eat a lot. Um, one thing that was useful that I brought was my um, camel pack because uh, at the end of the day we don't d drink enough water, I think. Even when I was there, I was not drinking enough water and uh, if you're an alcoholic, you probably don't go to Burning Man, it's the place to be for you. But um, yeah, hydrate a lot, moisturize, uh, take a shower when you can, and when you can't, there's a super um, fun camp. It's like a foam party thing, where you can go and, and wash yourself. And uh, there's nothing sexual at, uh, at all about it. Even the guy who is there is like clearly tell, guys, keep it down. Uh, <laughs> this is a non-sexual place here. Um, it's all about consent. Ah, uh, yeah, there's something I want to say about Burning Man. Everything is about consent. If someone said no, is no. Maybe is a no. Can I kiss you? Mm, that's the no. Okay? So consent is very, very important there. And um, you're going to get told off if you don't respect, respect that. Always ask. Even to take a picture of someone, always ask. To hug someone. Oh, can I give you a hug? Yeah, that's cool, probably. Yeah. Because a lot of people are naked there and these, like, they want to be free, uh, they want to express themselves, so like, be careful how you, you approach people. What's one thing about the, what is misunderstood about Burning Man? What is misunderstood is like you can't really explain it. <laughs> you have to live it to understand it. So I understand, I know why it's misunderstood because these things I cannot say in YouTube, on YouTube, I cannot say to the public, it's like people's privacy. And it's not even about the sex or something. Yes, there are orgies there, but like there's orgies in London, there's orgies in every big city. It's not like, oh my God, the orgies are burning, man. Who fucking cares? Like, uh, I come from Belgium, which is like the capital of, <laughs> like the country of all the biggest orgies in the world. Like, it's not... Even that, like, uh, it's, that's not even the case. It's not because people go to orgy that is the shocking thing about Burning Man. It's like I think people are more likely to go because they want to try something. They want to get out of their comfort zone or things like that. So, um, no, it's just... Um, I can't explain it. 
you got to go to leave it. People just think that, oh, these are bored, rich people who are going there to be on drugs, have sex, and drink, and uh, have a sentiment of freedom, which is not the case because you can clearly live a life like that here. Yeah. It's like, it's nothing to hide. Maybe if you're coming from a small town, there's probably a big gap between what you live in Burning Man and what you live on a daily life. That's what I'm saying. From my experience, I didn't find it very shocking. And people in my audience, I know my audience, you are between 25 and 35 and you're coming from the same places. I'm coming, I've been or I live or so you, you probably won't have a shock as well um, about uh, Burning Man. Well, um, misunderstood and oversimplified, yeah, I would say is um, the gifting economy is, um, I think it's a bit misunderstood and I think it's a really nice thing that's happening there because it also corresponds to my personality. I, uh, I'm a giver. I give a lot and I don't expect anything in return. And sometimes it causes conflict with certain type of people who are not very emotionally intelligent or the way people have been brought up to not like always receive something without um, expecting anything in return. Like some people are just not used to that. And um, I think this is a bit misunderstood about uh, Burning Man. You think if someone gives you something, you're like, oh my God, uh, what do you want from me? Uh, kind of thing. And this happened to me a lot as well. Like, I'm like, yeah, just being nice, like, chill. <laughs> you're not that special. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's another uh, topic. Yeah, how did you find the balance between doing it all and letting go? I didn't find it <laughs> and I'm still looking for it. But I know that um, when I go back, I will do things differently for sure. Um, less of the DJs, especially if I've seen them around the world already, I don't want to see them again, unless they are in a small camp and they are doing something a bit different, then I'm happy to see them again. But I want, uh, what I was disappointed about Burning Man is, um, I didn't find that much diversity in, ter in terms of music. Yes, I went to a jazz cafe. I went to, uh, I forgot the name of the camp, I probably write it down. Uh, there's like a rock, rock and roll camp. There's a punk camp. Yeah, but that's scattered here and there. So you have to do some research pre-burn to kind of, if you want to see this, because you don't really stumble upon it um, very often. You really often stumble upon <laughs> electronic music. But there's a camp that was doing the non-electronic music hour and I, I, I missed out on that but I would have liked to, to, to go and see that because it's America and uh, there's still like a strong music culture. You have indie music, indie rock, jazz, soul, like all these things. Like I wanted to see a bit more of that, like a bit more of live band, live music and, and this. And I think I missed out on that so this I, I, I would like to, to do more. And I would like to do a bit more uh, workshops, uh, yoga, no, not yoga, it's too hot for that. But <laughs> I want to, <laughs> like workshop, there's like art and craft things. Like there was this woman, she was amazing. She was doing um, these bikinis made of metal. I would have loved to have done that. I don't know, uh, maybe you had to wake up quite early to, to go do that. Um, I have a friend that flew a plane. There's like a camp, they, they bring uh, like a bunch of planes small planes obviously and then they take you and um, you can fly over the playa and have like a 360 view uh, you also have a hot air balloon that you can do and everything is free included so if you want a day if you want to spend a week somewhere you can do hot air balloon fly a plane all the food included drinks included and extra party supplies how much is going to cost you it's not gonna cost you $600, it's gonna cost you 10 times more than that. So that's something you gotta know before criticizing the cost of burning, or oh, what, what does burning mind brings you? Like, so, so, that so pissed me off so much. Um, yes, what else? Did I miss anything in your question? If you have any question, please put it in the comment. 
that is my summary of uh, my experience and my reflection about Burning Man. And the, the last burning question is like, will I go back? Absolutely. It is worth every effing penny. So I recommend anyone before criticizing it, just go and see it for yourself. So, uh, what's next for the channel? I was saying that I had a bit of an issue with YouTube. I will continue posting. It's probably not going to be weekly, but I'm uh, preparing a nice series about uh, travel tricks and, and tips that I'm scripting right now. There won't be much traveling for the... Oh yeah, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but let's say, like, I think for a solid three months, I, I still want to, to settle down a bit in London and uh, do other things but i have a lot of topics to talk about with you with my audience so if you are interested about knowing some travel tips tips and tricks please subscribe and uh, there will be more travel in the new year like exciting plans ahead for 2025 but i still want to reach a thousand subscribers before the end of 2024 so if you're still here please subscribe that will go such a long way and uh, thanks for watching. And as always, live inspired. Bye.